The U.S. Food and Drug Administration reports that Ritalin causes liver cancer in lab animals. The FDA issued the advisory not to discourage Ritalin use. There's absolutely no evidence of the drug causing cancer in humans. But the agency said people have a right to know. A Los Angeles doctor is worried about long-term side effects of medication for ADD and offers an alternative. Even the most fidgety youngster can be engaged by a fast-action arcade game. Somehow, doing homework just isn't as exciting. Eric Smith's attention deficit disorder showed up early. He struggled in school and found it close to impossible to sit down with a book. I usually, I ended up playing with my light or, or doing something in my room. You know, or I'd turn on the radio and then start singing and not do my homework. He just wasn't getting it. And uh, it uh, took us a while to figure out why he wasn't getting it. Not long after, Eric was taking Ritalin. Things got a lot better at school, but his parents were bothered by the thought their son might suffer rare but real side effects from taking the medication year after year. There was a list of them. Uh, he could have allergic reactions. Uh, I'd have to get the list. It, yeah. Ritalin's got quite a, it's, it's a, quite a history behind it. It's like an, it's an amphetamine. The Smiths dropped the Ritalin in favor of a non-medical treatment they say has worked well for Eric. Over the past three years, about 500 ADD children have taken neurofeedback training at the Drake Institute of Los Angeles. It starts with a video game. By letting them play a highly stimulating video game first, where the brain doesn't really have to do anything to focus on it, and then shifting to neurofeedback, where the arousal system has to shift to a stronger level to concentrate, it teaches the brain greater flexibility. Do your best, okay? Okay. Over three to five months and 40 sessions, the children learn a form of mind over matter. By concentrating, they can change the pattern of their own brain waves displayed on the screen. Look at all that blue. See, that's when you're focusing best. Okay, now I want you to try to do that all by yourself. Excellent. You learn how to focus and concentrate and produce brain waves that reflect our brain is shifting to a faster speed rather than needing a drug to speed up the brain because most of the drugs that are used for ADD are basically at speed. With practice, Belkoff says, no, the process no, becomes not. automatic. He claims success for three out of four patients. Our longest follow-up is eight years. If you have attention deficit disorder and you're symptom-free for three months, six months, a year, you don't have attention deficit disorder any longer. Anyway. We would not want to lead parents uh, down a path of false hope. Mary Richard is president of the country's largest advocacy group for ADD families. CHAD, as it's called, discourages neurofeedback, claiming it is not scientifically proven. CHAD, while it was formed by a group of parents, has always relied on the partnership with science and, prof and clinical professionals in this area. But Chad also relies on the generous financial support of the company that makes Ritalin. The group endorses the drug, but its leader sees no conflict of interest. On my side of the fence, I'm very much concerned with propriety. And that's the way we do business. I am very concerned about how many children are medicated so aggressively today for this disorder. And everything in my medical intuition tells me it's wrong. That we don't have long-term studies on the effectiveness and safety of these drugs. Velkov cites several small studies, plus his own experience, to validate neurofeedback. And while the practice is not widespread, he says there are qualified specialists scattered around the country. You see how they connected here? That's perfect. You want to try to keep that up. Valkoff attracts patients who share his concern about drugs and who can afford the time and $4,000 typically required. We read a lot about the drugs and it's a very powerful drugs. And um, we don't really want to get Nick into medication if we have an alternative. First it was hard, but as you go, it gets easier and easier and easier. Velkoff compares neurofeedback training to riding a bicycle or throwing a ball. Once you've got it, you've got it. It helped more than the medicine did. Toward the end of school, my medicine would wear off, and I was on my own, and this didn't wear off. It was always, it was always easy to concentrate. A year and a half later, Eric says it still is easier to concentrate at both work and play. Skeptics call for long-term follow-up, proving that neurofeedback really works. But Dr. Velkoff says the proof exists now among his and other practitioners' patients, and that calls for more data.